Hello, my beautiful students. It's me, Stu Sensei, your British English teacher, and I'm here today to help you communicate more confidently in English. And with today's video, we have another great listening practice for you. It's my friend again, Ariel. He is an English teacher here in Japan. He's from England, and he speaks with a London accent. And in this video, we're going to be learning about kudo. Kudo is Japanese archery. And we're going to be learning about this and learning vocabulary at the same time. Get ready to practice your listening skills and see how much you can understand from this conversation. Here we go. I have a friend with me today. Maybe you saw the last uh, session we did together. Um, do you want to introduce yourself one more time and uh, we'll go into today's topic? Cool, no worries. So my name's Ario from London. I am, I'm telling my age, I'm 39 years old. I oh, know I don't look it. Um, so I've been living in Japan for 11 years. I've got, I'm married, got two kids as well. Uh, I teach English. I'm a tour guide, translator, make videos as well. And yeah, just enjoying myself. Thanks for having me. Excellent. So you, can you tell us about what your hobbies are? Cool. So some of my hobbies are, um, I like exercise, I like hiking, but one of my main hobbies recently is, um, Kudo. Which is like a Japan. We say people say Japanese archery or the way of the bow. The way of the bow. I love that. Oh, yeah. wow. that's a great one. Is that with the uh, long bows? Because I see a lot of kids going around with these massive, like the equipment yeah. you have to take around is crazy big. Yeah. Yeah. So the bow is like two meters, and the bow I have to buy is actually longer than everyone else's. So I borrow a bow at the moment, but I'm going to buy my own bow soon when i've raised the funds but they're like yeah they're they're asymmetrical and they're like literally two meters high like i could not raise it up here it would it would hit the ceiling easy <laughs> you have a peter crouch bow basically yeah, yeah basically <laughs> <laughs> okay wow so what got you into that man that's that's such a cool hobby um yeah so i've saw it once in there's a japan matsuri in, in england i saw it once and i thought it was pretty looked pretty cool and then when I came here, um, a couple of my friends, they started doing it. And I went on a trial lesson with them one day and I was like, oh, I want to try this in the future. And then years and years passed. And I went, when I renewed my visa, mm. I was like, just in, during the pandemic, I was like, um, I know I really wanted to, you know, learn a skill, a Japanese skill. Let me go to the the, Bush the Bushido Center, which is not far from the, the place to get your, your visa, for, visa from. And that day they were having a lesson right at that time. And they said, I can go and look, went and looked. And then the teacher was like, do you want to learn? And I was like, yeah. And then she's like, are you going to live in Japan for a long time? Do you speak Japanese? I was like, yeah. She's like, all right, come in. And I started from then. But then the pandemic happened. I got injured. Like I tore my Achilles playing basketball. So I didn't do it for a couple of years. Then I went back about a year, like beginning of last year. And started again and i've been doing it since yeah oh that's really really cool that's one of those things i think when you go to a new country or when you move out it's good to get involved somewhere inside the the ecosystem you know yeah yeah i yeah. think it's the best like one of the best things i've i've done as well because these people they don't want me to teach them english like we're there as a group and we're doing something together it's not like oh yeah be my friend teach me english it's like you know, I'm learning, I'm part of the community. I have to clean up. I have to do all these things in Japanese. And next month we're going on a, like a gashik, I don't know, like a camp, kudo camp for two, for three days, two nights. We're going to go and practice and that's going to be pretty cool. And that's like, you know, nothing to do with English, nothing. <laughs> well, that's, that's an interesting point because that's my, the one thing that's, like haunting me wherever I go is that I, you know, you're the English guy. So people think you're going to teach them English. So like my kids, uh, one, my daughter plays football. Yeah. And then, uh, I, I, I actually, when I went to university, I studied football coaching. Oh, so wow. I wanted to go and like help out. And then the first thing I said was, Oh, you could teach the kids English in, 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 and football at the same time. I was like, I kind of was just hoping just to enjoy time with my daughter and maybe learn some Japanese at the same time, you know? Yeah. Um, and I don't mind that, but it's like, it's almost like a, something that's hanging over you. Yeah. So, yeah. so that's really amazing. Um, the bows though, they must be expensive, no? Yeah, they are. They are expensive, which is why, why I don't have one yet. I think 
when I'm, I need to get myself like six man, 60,000 yen to buy a, about 400 uh, reasonable ones. Yeah, there are more expensive ones like made from bamboo, but this is like a carbon fiber one. Sure, 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 and sure, sure, sure. yeah, a lot of things cost. Like the arrow, the glove that you use is about 20,000 yen. The arrows would cost you about 10,000 yen, you know? So, you know, so it's, it's expensive when you buy the stuff, but doing it isn't expensive. So I pay like 2,000 yen a month to train and I can train eight times, a, eight times a month. Wow, that so, is really cheap. Yeah, it's really, really cheap. It's like, it costs more for me to take the train there than it costs me to, to train. <laughs> really crazy. I didn't realise. It's one of those sports I've always thought to get into, actually, because I thought it's interesting to do. But yeah. to, I'm, I'm quite short, so maybe two metres is a bit too big for me. I don't uh, but every, everyone's sh everyone short. I am the, I am the <laughs> giant. In, like, everyone's short. Okay. I might teach you to stand on a chair to adjust my stuff. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. That's interesting. <laughs> Um, so, I, and what I would also be doing is running down to the board after firing one arrow and polishing it off, and putting it back in the in the. <laughs> you have that thing? Yeah, that thing, is it called a quiver or something? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Leg, like Legolas. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'll be making sure I got it <laughs> like in pristine condition, so I didn't have to buy any more. <laughs> yeah, wow, that's that's, uh, but still pretty cool. So, is it is the basic premise similar to? Uh, what we would just say is archery in in the uk just with a longer bow so in theory this um kudo is more about half of it is about hitting the target and half of it about is about doing it in correct form and being really present so it's almost like a form of meditation when you do it because you do things in a certain order it's like a like a kata for it and you do it with each so you're in a group of maybe three to five people and you would, when one person stands, then you can stand. When one person shoots, then you can, you know, you know, get your bow ready. So it's kind of like a process, it's like a dance, kind okay. of, kind of like a dance. It's like poetry in motion, as I like to say. And it's when you do that, it helps you concentrate. So it's really helps. It's kind of like therapy. Yeah. Like, like literally, you only only thinking about the bow and the arrow and setting it correctly, moving in the correct form. It's like it's deeper, yeah. So archery would just be like, got it, shot, shot it right. I got it, hit the target. But this is more about it's like you are the target kind of thing. So it's oh, kind of wow. kind of deep. <laughs> That's interesting. So it's good for mindfulness, I guess, as well as uh, yeah, definitely sport. Okay. Definitely. Uh, what? Tell me about the feeling when you hit the the bullseye. If it, if you do hit the bullseye, yeah, no, that feeling is great. You feel like a. Uh, a sense of of accomplishment and that you've done things correctly because it's not it's not easy to to fire even just to fire with that bow and because it's just it's just literally a string and wood you okay. know and obviously it's been perfectly crafted every, and everything's been perfectly crafted but there's no like sights on it or anything so it means you've done everything great and i feel really good especially the sound when you hear you know the the sudanair when the what's it the string makes the sound and it hits it's really good so the twang but, yeah i actually yeah. have this is one of my um arrows so i actually i broke this arrow i don't know oh, the arrow broke the top the tip came off oh my god it's so long the tip came off yes <laughs> Look, it's this lo it's this long it's ridiculous so it's because I, i'm tall basically it's yeah. from your it's called a yazaka. It's like from your hand, the tip of your fingers to like halfway through your body. So the the length has to be the same. So that's part of the process then, I guess. Yeah, I guess. yeah. It has to be the right length to be able to fire. Oh, yeah. that's No one else can use my. No one else can use mine. And I can't use anyone else's because when I pull it full, it will come off. So sure, it has sure, to be sure, 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 sure. It has to be precise because it's that basic. So there's no... Um, like on a on a uh, when you watch the Olympics and you see them do the archery there, th the bows tend to have like a little a, st a stand is the wrong word I guess, but there's like something supporting the arrow at the very oh. end. I guess that you don't have that. No, it's this is <laughs> you're supporting it on your hand. It's very so it's going to be uh, on there. Uh, wow! So it's very very like old school let's say yeah it is like 
you know, you have one of those martial arts, like you watch in Shogun. Have you seen those? Every, any of those shows? Yeah, it's like that. It's like that arrow. The one that he's got. Was it buntaro has got? Yeah, like that. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. That's really cool. Okay, yeah. so um, what I've experienced with clubs in Japan is that they're a lot more overwhelming than in the uk like if you go to a club like i was part of a football club for maybe i'm going to say 20 years i was i was into it quite for 20 years is maybe wrong but 15 years let's say yeah and, um, but you you have like your training once a week and then you have a match day once a week but you don't have to go like it's not like a must you should go to training of course but it's not yeah. like a, you don't feel like you've let someone down if you go to training mm. my experience here it's kind of like I feel like I'm letting the team down if I don't even appear the training. And sometimes yeah. training is more than once a week. But in your case, it's a paid club, of course, it's a bit different. But do you have that yeah. same feeling? Yeah, I mean, if I don't, if I can't go for some reason, usually it's because my, my one of my children are sick. Then I'm, it's fine if, as long as you communicate. But I do feel like I don't want to miss it because you know they're expecting me when I'm when someone's not there. You have that the numbers. I mean, moving a team, people yeah. are helping yeah. out. So it's like, oh, you're not, you're not here. You know, when I went on my long absence, part of it hard for me to come back was the fact that I was gone for so long. Oh, and so I know there would be that kind of thing of shame. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. So when I came back, I was like, yeah. <laughs> I brought presents. I, I literally bought presents. And I was like, I'm back. Um, I came back and then I was like determined to, to you know, how do you say, succeed. So we have um, grades as well. So you have like, you know, Dan. Dan, you know, dance. Yeah, so yeah. I have my like my first Dan in in Kudo, and I got that in March, and I was so great to get that. Like now, I feel like I'm part, really part of the of the team, and I've become a real member as well. Wow. So that's pretty good. Yeah, you must be dead, dead chuffed for sure. Yeah, um, yeah. So is does that mean there um you don't get a belt or something? What do you get? Golden apple. You don't get a golden arrow. Yeah, get an apple. <laughs> but, uh, you get um. You just you just get the you get a certificate. I've got it actually. It's over there on the back on the, the little certificate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See. And then um, that, and that's it. My then my um, our sensei gave us a little pin that you can put on the back of your of your hakama, which yeah, is pretty yeah. cool. And then that's and that's it. But then you know you know that you know you're a, your first stand the shodan. I feel good, really good about that. Like really proud of it. Oh, that's amazing. That's really really cool. So, and it's not just the the fact that you passed the thing. It's like for you, it's a twofold thing now because you had the one experience where you took a massive break, yeah. but now like you've had the consistency level as well to reach that standard. So yeah. it's hit you twice. That's amazing. Yeah, that's so cool. So, um, how many dans are there in total? Ten, <laughs> and it's like I don't know if there are any people with like you know. 10 but like you know five and six if you have like five and six your scene was really really high like really really high and if yeah any it's just if you're like six then you have like really you're really strong good aura you're hitting a target a lot you're a good example and i really like you can become a teacher from that level so i'd really like to to get there as well it'll take years and years but consistency and hard work it's the key thing for everything as we now as we say as teachers yes. exactly uh, wow that's really cool so um i guess it's an outdoor sport no can you do it indoor um kind of, you can you can do it indoors you can do it indoors you have um there's a competition i went to not just to watch and that was in kyoto that was indoors but it's just a big open space but usually so it's kind of like half in and half out it's weird <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so it's like where you're where you are shooting from is kind of like semi-covered yeah and then yeah. then where you're shooting through is you know outside and then where it hits where the target is is kind of inside it's pretty cool building okay. it's pretty cool and okay. not all of them are like that some of them are inside sports halls but i was just like a cute a cute or jaw cute or pan. yeah it's nice okay so um do you feel well, when, when you went to that competition, first of all, were there many people watching? And do, would, do you think you'd like to be in that position in the future? Oh, yeah. I'd, I'd like to have to be confident enough to be in that position. In fact, I will enter a competition soon 
just I think I've got like one or a few things to adjust, you know, have some consistency of being at least close to the target than I would like to. But it's to have the to know that you're doing the correct thing and not second guessing because it's literally you're going out there and you're doing a performance as well. People will be watching your every move as yeah. well. And you and you know, you just wanna not crack under pressure. Sure. It's kind of like gymnastics, I guess. Yeah. I mean, I could not do gymnastics at all, but no, no, yeah. no, 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 no. <laughs> When you watch the gym, gymnastics, pretty much everyone's doing a similar routine or, or mm. some similarities, but it's the form that they do it, isn't it? Yeah. How, um, how, uh, what can I say? How, I've lost the words completely. Everyone does it, guys, even English teachers. Uh, <laughs> It's how you uh, effortlessly yeah. do thing, isn't it? Um, and then, so and then, obviously, the people who will be watching you in the competition, they will understand what's going on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, do, do you feel do people give you more credit than you deserve because you're not Japanese? Um, it's I don't, in, yeah, I don't. In this um, class, I don't think so. I, I haven't really had that kind of that kind of treatment. Or anything like that, you know. Sure, um, sure. Yeah. Uh, yo, you, you, yo, it's good for a foreigner. No, yeah, no, yeah. no, <laughs> not at all. Maybe if with my, if I'm doing something in Japanese, sure, then, sure. then yeah, if I'm like writing something, because we had um, there's an exam when you do the exam. There's actually a written exam as well, and you have to provide that beforehand because of Corona, you could provide it beforehand, and you can do it in English or Japanese. I did it in Japanese, so I wrote. It took me a long time. Like I'm, that's why I realized I need to practice writing a lot. Mm. It took me a long time, and but I wrote it out, I submitted it. They read it. Obviously, I passed, which is great. But they were impressed that I did that. So that was. But when I'm firing and shooting and stuff like that, they're not impressed. <laughs> they're not impressed <laughs> because I'm a foreigner. Because they they've seen the consistency. Probably impressed that I do it. Though. You do get that sometimes here, though, yeah. Because people yeah. are like you. Yeah, they don't expect anyone to. They're so, how can I say, they're so not used to having foreign people around so frequently that yeah. when they see someone come and, and who isn't being immersed in the culture the whole of their life, I yeah. think they're surprised by the effort that's put in and they're very grateful for that, yeah. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah, okay, that's cool, that's cool. Because that's one, one of the things that, I, I don't want to say puts me off, but it kind of holds me back a little bit because I'm not great when people are like, it feels like overly... Yeah. Uh, giving you like too much praise you know i don't know how about you how you feel about it but for me having too much praise like suddenly even for like the smallest things is a bit i don't know if it's english but it feels a little false or whatever but yeah. no obviously in japan it's a thing so how do you feel yeah and no, i feel that if it's for speaking japanese saying something really basic that kind of thing yeah but with kudo if you hit the target you've you you deserve like someone to say something like well right. if, you, if you hit if I hit the target, if we firing two shots and I hit the target twice and someone says something to me, that's, that's, they would say it to someone else as well. It's not like a common thing. If you hit like four in a row, you're getting, everyone's applauding, applauding. You. So it's you no, know, if you fire and it hits the floor, no one's going to say anything. Oh, wow. That was so good. There's none, no false praise here. <laughs> that's good news. Uh, have you seen someone hit the target four times in a row? Yeah. Yeah. It happens like when I, and I, uh, how do you say more senior our, our senpais they, they, they do that they do that regularly they do it regularly and I, that's my next goal to get like four actually my next goal is to get like two or something <laughs> four that would be a big thing but how did what does that make you feel like when you see them do like to that standard are you in awe of them or are you just i'm inspired i'm definitely inspired and i really you know, and I'm in awe because it's. I know it's not easy. It's not an easy thing. You need to be fully focused to to hit it. I think. What would it be like? It would be like hitting um, like hitting the cro You know, the crossbar and in four times in a row from the cent from the center, like consistency, consistently, crossbar and in, not just in. Yeah. You know, Talent. something like that, and you know that you need to concentrate. And it's possible if you're really focused. You know those things, those hard kicks, like when they're when it's from rugby and they and they what's it called? I can't even remember what it's called again. I used to play as well. <laughs> <laughs> I never kicked. Right? Uh, yeah, yeah, a field goal. Yeah, yeah, from 
you know, after you've got a track. American, I guess, yeah. But oh, yeah. Maybe, yeah, when you do that anyway, uh, you know, from a, a tight corner or when you hit like a, what do you call it? A 7-10 split, I think, in bowling or something. If you could do that four times in a row, it takes yeah, a lot of yeah. accuracy and concentration. So it's really, it's really inspirational. It's like the highest level of, you know, athletic ability in terms of like mindfulness and concentration. Are there any people there that, you know, you, we talked about the form, but when they go in, they're a bit, you know, then maybe their form is not perfect, but then they still hit the target and you're like, mm. you're still like, do you feel like there's other ways to do it, not just the one method? Or do you think having the one, it's the whole package, not just the hitting the target kind of thing? Yeah, because if you hit the target, I mean, sometimes they hit the target and the teacher's like, that was good, you hit the target, but you're, you know, when you um, let go, you're supposed to extend fully, but you didn't, it didn't look beautiful. It needs to look beautiful and hit. It's, it's like both. It's literally both. It's like doing things sloppy, like, it's like having the correct answer, but with sloppy handwriting kind sure. of thing. So you oh. want it to look nice as well. Yeah, yeah sure. You wouldn't pass the exam. You wouldn't pass the, um, the exam to go up a grade if you, if you didn't do it right, even if you hit the target twice. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Maybe those, because from an outsider looking in, from an outside looking in, it's, um, it's you when we think of archery we just think of hitting the target and not necessarily the form that goes alongside it and like you said it's part of the it's not just about the sport itself like that it's also the the mindfulness or the meditative side from it as well that also adds to the whole thing that like you said the performance so um i can understand why it's all together if you if you think of it less of like a you know, in football, we think of you need to score a goal. But if you yeah. think the way someone scores a goal, like yeah. the, the difference between Jamie Vardy and Ronaldo would be that, you know, the finesse side, maybe, yeah. you know, so. Okay, so that makes a lot of sense. Okay, it's interesting. Um, are there many other forms of archery in Japan that you know of? Um, I think there is a form. Um, there are other, a few styles. It's the same kudo. A few styles and there's one um i know they've got like uh where it's more about hitting the target like okay. um and there's some that's more like war based like uh, as if it was in war and okay. they'll be and there's Yab yabusama where they do it on the horse oh wow so Have that's kind of like our what do you call that jousting yeah it's like jousting but it's they're literally it's on the horse with an arrow firing at a target while they go past i've seen that yeah 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 that looks amazing yeah that's a uh, that's like it's like two it's complete it's weird it's like juggling on a on a unicycle kind of thing yeah so it's would crazy you, would you like to try that i would i would like to try it but i'd need to be i would like to try it yeah i'd like to try it <laughs> i've done i've done i've re, I've, re, you know, I've been on a horse before and i've fired an arrow before so could try it, it wouldn't be bad to have a try it'd it'd be probably be it, no there's no such thing as impossible but it'd be extremely like impressive wouldn't it because uh the way the horse moves and then mm. you're trying to keep that standard as well that you were yeah. talking about so oh man i could imagine that would be an epic thing to do it's you a bit, a bit do different it. you can definitely do it buddy you got to try <laughs> no i'll try there's a there's a um a, lady, um a young lady jess garrity and um she's in i think saitama based and she she does that as well she trains and it's an australian guy who does it as well Oh, really? he, he in japan he like led one of the main ceremonies doing it once so that was uh, amazing i watched that the other day actually it's pretty wow. cool that's see, great so to see people who have also come to japan to get to such a high level must be even more like of an inspiration because you know because it's kind of following our process as well isn't it yeah yeah no, it's true it's following yeah it's following that process and they're they're then they're, they're like nice people um on social media i speak to jess a lot as well and she's um very you know helpful and she posts a lot of content about kudo as well and i even actually last well this month they had um the first kudo world magazine and i and i put an article in there so i wrote something amazing about, yeah, yeah which is pretty cool oh that's really cool man that's amazing oh wow uh what does your partner think of you doing kudo I didn't ask that actually. she thinks it's she thinks it's cool i mean initially i kind of didn't tell her about it because i am um, i don't even know what they say in english but in japanese they say mikabozu so i like i start things and don't finish them a lot so okay. i thought let me start it for a while and then when i 
get a little bit good, then I'll tell her about it. And she's she's pretty impressed about uh, that I do it. She's not come to see. I haven't invited her to see anything yet. Not confident enough, but one day I will. But she yeah. likes it. She's. She, I'm going on the the trip. She's fine. It's literally me and so in the team, there are two men. I'm one of them, and I think on this trip it's just me as a male and then just a bunch of 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 ladies. Going, and she's fine with that because it's it's cute off. Okay. now she knows previously you didn't tell her you're just sneaking out of the house she was like what's yeah, well, going on she i was like she was at work anyway so she didn't know what i was doing. <laughs> yeah that's fair enough what did you get from this video i'd love to know if you learned some new vocabulary if you did try to use it in the comments and that's it for this one but if you want more content like this you can find it here